What's up guys, it's Michaela. welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be reacting to your guys' assumptions about marine biology. This was a trend, oh gosh, God knows how long, but I decided to hop on it better late than never, am I right? I asked you guys for your assumptions on my photography Instagram, so if you guys aren't following it, it's always linked down below and it is always listed at the end of my videos. I got a few submissions on my photography account, but I wanted this video to be a little bit longer, so I looked up common slash basic assumptions about marine biology, so I will also be reacting to those as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first assumption is it is hard, very hard, and I guess that kind of depends on how strong you are in chemistry and math because as I said in my 10 things I wish I knew about marine biology before majoring in it, it is very chem and math heavy and despite what people say, chemistry is very very hard. It's not the same as high school chemistry whatsoever. That's honestly a personal preference. I know some people in my marine biology classes, they get chemistry like that and they struggle in math and some of them get math like that and they struggle in chem. I unfortunately struggle in both. So to me, yes, it is personally very hard. The next assumption is it is a very competitive field and that is correct. It is competitive to get into a college to study marine biology and it is competitive to find a career in marine biology. A couple days ago, I was looking at different colleges and the requirements for transfer students for marine biology and my dream school, Cal State Monterey Bay, it said in big bold letters that the 2019-2020 school year was impacted for marine biology majors. If you don't know what that means, that basically means they had so many students apply and they only had a certain amount of space so they had to deny a lot of people which kind of scares me because I'm applying either this fall or next fall to transfer so... And as far as finding a career in the marine biology field I don't necessarily have a lot of personal experience with this because I'm still in college, but from what I've read and from what I've heard, marine biology jobs are kind of hard to come by, but once you find one, like, you're set. I could be wrong, but that's just my assumption about this assumption. The next assumption is marine biology helps the environment. 100% true. I don't care what you do in marine biology, if you study orcas like I want to, you are helping the wild orca population and they're in the environment and they're in the ocean. If your specialty is coral, there is a huge problem right now with coral bleaching and I would love to be a part of that but I just naturally don't gravitate towards coral. But if you guys have the opportunity to, please switch to reef safe sunscreen. I will link a list down below of lists of sunscreens that are reef safe because a lot of them that you find at stores are not reef safe. An example of a reef safe sunscreen brand sometimes is Sunbum. I had this sunscreen on me so I figured I would show you guys. You have to make sure it is a mineral sunscreen. Sunbum does make non-reef safe sunscreen so you need to make sure and read the label and read the ingredients because I forgot the two ingredients. I will put them on the screen right here but these two ingredients are not reef safe and they cause coral bleaching which is not good because we get I think like 78% of the oxygen we breathe from coral. Contrary to popular belief you can fact check me and I will leave a link to a source down below. The next assumption came in from one of my close friends, classmates, and she volunteers at the Aquarium of the Pacific with me. So Kiana says something she gets a lot is marine biologists don't make a lot of money. From what I have read, they have the potential to make a lot of money if you have a master's or even a doctorate degree. I personally don't think I will ever go to school to get my doctorate because I don't want to be writing grants all the time and doing paperwork all the time. I would much rather be doing field work and stuff like that. I think in the United States, the average income of a marine biologist is between 50 and I want to say 80,000 a year. Again, I'll put it on the screen if I find it, but it's not that low considering there are a lot more lower income jobs. The next assumption is you have to touch dead fish all day. I think it totally depends on your field. When I did shark research in Miami at the beginning of last month, I was touching dead fish pretty much every day because I had to bait hooks so we could catch the shark and bring it up on board to work up. 
My field specifically with marine mammals, unless you're working in a captive setting like SeaWorld or another marine park, I don't necessarily see why you would have to touch dead fish because you're not baiting hooks to catch them. You're not feeding marine mammals because that is illegal. So I think it totally depends on the field you work in. Obviously if you're going to deal with coral and like octopus, I don't think you're going to be touching dead fish because coral don't eat fish. Again, that is something that is totally depended on what your specific major qualification like area is. So now moving on to the assumptions that I found on the internet. The first one is all marine biologists study whales and dolphins. That is very untrue. That's true for me because obviously I want to study cetaceans and marine mammals, but there are so many other marine biologists that study coral, plankton, fish, sharks. Again, it totally depends on what your area of specialization is. If you obviously work at SeaWorld, you will probably more than likely work with either whales or dolphins. So unless you're in a marine park, or you're specializing in it like I am, there's a good chance you will not work with whales or dolphins. And that's a great thing about marine biology is you can pick what you want to study. If you don't like whales and dolphins, you don't have to work with them. I particularly don't really like plankton, I'm not working with them. It's, it's just so versatile. The next assumption is marine biologists hate fishermen. And that is very untrue. I have a problem with fishermen that fish irresponsibly. So I see fishermen, even when I'm walking the beach and they're fishing off of the little jetty. If you guys don't know what a jetty is, I'll insert a picture here. It's just basically like a rock wall. But I have a problem with them when they just leave their fishing line or worse, they throw it in the ocean because that is so much of where ocean pollution comes from and that is so incredibly sad. I have been to our sea lion rescue centers in California and almost all of them are either stranded, malnourished, or have fishing line entangled on them. And I have seen sea lions on our little buoy outside of our harbor with scars around their necks because fishermen irresponsibly throw their line in the water and I do realize that lines break and stuff like that happens and we can't prevent that but we can lessen it so much by having fishermen pick up their trash before they leave. A lot of fishermen provide marine biologists with great information like fish count and stuff like that but I my sole problem with fishermen lies on their pollution and their trash dumping but other than that I have a pretty great respect for fishermen. Most of them know what they're doing and respect the ocean, there are a few certain ones that don't. And the last assumption is marine biologists spend their life on the water. Again, that is not true. I would say around half of it is spent in the field and then half of it is spent in a lab because when you go out to the field to collect data, you need to work up the data, you need to organize the data, you need to analyze it in a lab. So it is very much split sometimes maybe one month you'll spend a lot more time in the lab than in the field and then another month you'll spend a lot more time in the field than in the lab totally depending on what you're working on what species you're working with and just that time in general so those were all the assumptions about marine biology that i will be reacting to thank you guys for watching if you have any more questions or assumptions about marine biology make sure to comment them down below and while you're down there, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. We are so close to 400 subscribers. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!